Your tie is one of the most important part of your presentation, but yet it's grossly overlooked. I was just reading the other day how Goldman Sachs is not even requiring their employees to wear ties anymore. When you're talking to somebody, you always want them to be looking at your face, and your tie sits right below your face. A wise man once said that well-dressed men judge each other by the kind of ties they wear. And there's a lot of truth to that statement. Now, I always preach that your shoes are the most important part of your outfit. But when you're well-dressed, it's a guarantee that you're wearing nice shoes. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's a given. You know, if the guy is well-dressed, he's wearing nice shoes. If he's not wearing nice shoes, he's probably not well-dressed. You know what I'm saying? But when it comes to your ties, that's a different story. A lot of thought go into what kind of ties you wear. Choosing the right tie to buy really takes some skills because there are so many different options. So in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly the kind of ties that every man should have in their wardrobe and what ties to stay away from. Yo, what up? My name is Vladimir Richet from ChaseAndRider.com. So in this video, I'm going to tell you exactly the three type of ties that every man should have in their wardrobe. But before we get to that, of course, I have to tell you about the kind of ties to stay away from. Now, when it comes to ties, I'm sure it's the most popular gift that men receive, whether it's on their birthday, Christmas, or Father's Day. And that's because people always think, well, I can't really go on with a tie because every man wear ties, you know? But that is the problem because you can actually go really, really wrong with ties. Not to just blame the person giving the gift because a lot of men be picking some ugly ties themselves. But I think a lot of the ugly ties that we see are usually given as gifts. And a lot of men don't know any better, so they're like, all right, cool, thank you. My goal with this video is to help men prioritize their ties more, knowing exactly what ties to buy, instead of relying on receiving them as gifts. This kind of ties are the biggest offenders. They are the one that you see the most, and they are also the ugliest tie that you can have around your neck. They usually come very shiny and very wide. Now I did a video about the perfect tie length, uh, you see it somewhere up here, I also link it in the comments below. But these type of ties are the ties that you probably see most men wear, and those ties couldn't be any uglier. Now, quality ties are usually pretty expensive. Most of my ties cost me anywhere from $75 to $150. Certain things you can cut corners on, but I don't think that your tie should be one of them. Now that I showed you the kind of ties to stay away from, let's talk about the second one. This one is one of my pet peeves. One thing that I see, and it happens too often, guys usually do this. For example, they'll wear a yellow shirt, and then they'll wear a tie that has some blue stripes and yellow stripes on them for the yellow or the shirt to be pulling the yellow from the tie. Or it could be like a purple shirt and have a tie that has black, purple, and yellow stripes. That's almost as predictable as your tie and your pocket square being cut from the same fabric. You have to be a little bit more creative. Actually, I have an example for exactly what I'm talking about. One second. A guy will throw on a burgundy shirt like this, and then you guessed it, and they'll be wearing a tie that has some burgundy stripes on it like this. I mean, come on, man. We gotta be a little bit more creative than that. A purple shirt with a tie that has purple stripes on it or a burgundy shirt with a tie with burgundy stripes on it. That's as elementary as you can get, man, you know? But it's something that I see every day. I'm sure I've made that mistake myself in the past. Besides wearing better ties, a simple way to correct that mistake is by simply wearing plain white and light blue shirts. By the way, I got a video called The Seven Style Mistakes. I'm gonna put the card up here I'll also include it in the description below. Uh, you can check it out in that video. I talk about all the crazy color shirts that guys be wearing and how they can go about correcting that mistake. Now that I showed you the kind of ties to stay away from and also the type of shirt and tie combinations to avoid, let's talk about why you're really here. The three type of ties that every man should have in their wardrobe. The first tie that I recommend is a solid tie. Solid ties are probably the easiest ties to wear. Solid ties can come in all sorts of different materials. Like in the winter, for example, there are some beautiful wool ties that you can get in solid colors. But one kind of solid tie that I recommend to every man I meet is a grenadine tie. Grenadine is a kind of silk that's only produced in Italy. I'm holding a blue grenadine tie. This type of silk has some texture to it. Grenadine ties come in all sorts of different colors. Personally, I have three grenadine ties. I have a blue, I have a black, and I have a green. But feel free to get any color you like. Blue is one of those colors that go very nice with gray suits. I also have a black grenadine tie. You've probably seen me wear it in a couple of my videos. I always wear a black grenadine tie if I'm going to a funeral or if I'm attending an event that's a little bit more formal. 
Green is a really nice color that goes with blue and gray really well. It also goes really, really nice with brown, which are for the most part the suit colors that I wear, blue, brown, and gray. The second kind of ties that I recommend would be a stripe tie. Now you're probably saying, didn't you just show me a stripe tie earlier and you told me to stay away from that? Well, yes, but I'm not talking about all stripe ties. See, the thing is, not all stripe ties are created equal. But when it comes to stripe ties, it's very easy to go wrong. Now look at this tie again. Versus if you look at this tie here, there's a big difference. When I'm talking about striped ties, these are the kind of ties that I recommend. This particular tie is a vintage Brooks Brothers tie. It has a little bit of heft to it. It's 50% silk and 50% wool. With that said, striped ties are probably the type of ties that I own the least amount of. That's not to say I don't like them. I really, really do like striped ties, but I usually find myself reaching for either a solid tie or for a fuller tie, which we'll be talking about next. One very important factor to consider if you're wearing striped ties. Like if I was wearing this tie, you can see the direction of the stripes. They go from my right shoulder down to my left torso. Now, if you're asking yourself, why is that important? That's because there are a lot of organizations in England that are associated with certain tie colors and patterns. But the biggest distinction is for those type of ties, the stripes run the opposite direction. So they go from your left shoulder to your right torso, as opposed to this tie that goes from my right shoulder to my left torso. It's not something that you have to worry about too much, but that is something to consider if you were to see a tie that you like, but it runs in the opposite direction. You might be offending somebody by wearing that tie if you're not part of their club or organization. Now, last but not least, the third type of tie that I recommend is what's called a fuller tie. A fuller tie is a kind of pattern that repeats itself. Nine out of 10 times when I open my drawer, I reach out for a fuller tie. For example, I'm wearing a fuller tie right now. And like I was saying, the fuller tie is a kind of pattern that repeats itself. And with mine, you can see that the circle pattern repeats itself throughout the tie. And also the square pattern also repeats itself throughout the tie. And this is, this is another example of a fuller tie. This one is a blue tie. And also this one has the circle pattern that repeats itself throughout the tie. And this is more like a diamond pattern that also carries itself throughout the tie as well. And those are my favorite kind of ties to wear. The reason why I love fuller ties is because of the patterns. And I also like the fact that they come in really beautiful colors. Another thing that I like about the fuller tie, besides the multiple colors, is the different kind of scales. For example, this is a blue tie, but has a little bit of orange, a little bit of green, a um, little bit of light blue. So that gives you a lot to play with when it's time to pair it with your pocket square. As opposed to a solid tie is just solid, usually I wear my solid ties with a plain white pocket square. And with a striped tie, a lot of times the colors are all the same scale. So if it's three colors in a tie, most striped ties, the three colors are going to be the same exact scale. So it's not really the same when it comes to, to pair it with the pocket square because you don't know which one is the dominant color, which one is the secondary color, which one is the third color. I recently did a video on how to pair your tie in pocket square. I'll also include it in the description below. In that video, I talk about how most ties usually have a primary color, then a secondary color, then a third color. Personally, I like the relationship of a fuller tie and a pocket square. To me, it gives you more option than any other kind of tie. As far as materials, just like striped ties, fuller ties usually come in silk or wool. The one that I'm wearing right now is 100% silk, but it's an ancient matter. Ancient matter is more of a fall winter fabric because the colors are a little bit more muted, and it also has a chalky type feel. So it goes perfect with flannel suits and tweed jackets and those type of things. The tie that I'm holding in my hand, that one is 100% wool, which is also a fall and winter fabric because of how heavy it is. I really love fuller ties. I feel like they're the most versatile ties that you can have. And the reason why I say that is because you can dress them up and you can dress them down. Solid ties are looked at as being a little bit more conservative, but fuller ties to me are very versatile. You can run with a sport coat, you can run with a suit, and they look beautiful with both. Striped ties to me, there's only so many different color combinations of striped ties that you can have. And the pattern is always going to be the same. It's always going to be diagonal. Versus a fuller tie can come in so many different patterns and so many different scales and so many different accents. It could be like a flower. It could be like a circle. It could be like a diamond. It could be like a rectangle. There are so many options when it comes to fuller ties. They're almost unlimited. So if you are building a wardrobe of, let's say, 10 ties, the way that I would go about breaking it down would be I would get five fuller ties, I would get three grenadine ties, and I would get two striped ties. That's just the way that I would do it. So let me know in the comments if you are starting your wardrobe from scratch and you have to pick 10 ties, what kind of 10 ties would you get? So this was my three types of ties that every man should own. Hit the thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe or everybody gonna think that you're a hater. And I'll catch you in the next video. Peace.